How has the figure of De La Salle been viewed over the 300 years since his death? On Good Friday, the 7th of April, 1719, Brother Barthé Lemay sent for the artist Duflis to make the death portrait of De La Salle. It was necessary to have a faithful picture of the founder so that future generations of brothers and La Salleans could recognize and venerate the image of the founder. The Duflis portrait was used to produce the first image of De La Salle to be circulated, namely the crepe engraving. This appeared in some copies of the first edition of the Rules and Constitutions of 1726 and in the Meditations for the Time of Retreat in 1730. In 1733, the biographer Blaine published the second image of the founder, the Scotin engraving, which is considered to be one of the masterworks of La Salian iconography. It was based on the first portrait by Léger, who used de La Salle as his model. The start of the process of canonization of John Baptist de La Salle in April 1836 marked a new step in his iconography. Between 1840, when the founder was declared venerable, and his beatification in 1888, the Institute undertook a public distribution of the image of the Servant of God in order to promote popular devotion and obtain the miracles needed for his canonization. In 1882, it was decided that the second portrait by Leger would be the official portrait of the Institute because it was a faithful representation of the founder. Other portraits found less acceptance among the brothers yet they did have some influence on the production of a new iconography. The biography by Ravelais was published on the occasion of the beatification of de la Salle, and it was a milestone in La Salian iconography. It brought together a large number of engravings on the life of the founder, which reflect the religious mentality of French society of the period. It was a rather severe spirituality, in which piety was seen as based on the sufferings of Christ and his passion. On the 24th of May, 1900, de la Salle was declared a saint by Pope Leo XIII. There was a multiplication in the production of images, engravings, medals, and statues in his honor. In Paris, the sculptor Oliva produced a statue of de la Salle, the legislator, for the mother house in the Rue Odino, and in 1890, he made a small-scale copy which is in the Generalate in Rome today. However, it was the statue of the Holy Founder by Falguier in the Place saint Sever in Rouen, rather than the one by Oliva, which inspired Aureli in his production of the statue that has stood in St. Peter's Basilica in Rome since 1904, and which has become an emblematic representation of de la Salle as a teacher accompanied by children. The First World War obliged the brothers to meet new challenges in the form of secularization, they experienced a split between Christian discipleship and the work of human education in the schools. These two aspects were reflected in the representations of the Holy Founder, which showed him sometimes as piously withdrawn from the world, and sometimes as a teacher who was a guide in the midst of the storm. On the 15th of May, 1950, Pope Pius XIII proclaimed St. John Baptist de la Salle as the patron of all educators. The society of the post-war world was one of searching and new views on reality. The Church's response to these challenges came in the form of the Second Vatican Council. In the Institute, a new way of being brother was developed. These events may well have had an impact on the way in which the figure of the founder was viewed. New generations of Lasallians needed to see de La Salle as someone journeying with others, associated with his brothers, with human sensitivity to educational situations. In 1980, when the tercentenary of the Institute was celebrated, there was an increase in the popularity of the face of de la Salle taken from the picture by Giovanni Gagliardi in 1901, entitled Visit by the Parish Priest Saint Sulpice. Two Italian artists of the early 20th century, Aurelio Mariani and Giovanni Gagliardi, became popular 
they painted a series of pictures on the life of the Holy Founder. These pictures were possibly responding to the new sensitivities, because they began to show De La Salle in a more human and approachable manner. Another portrait that became popular during the Tercentenary was the Serve portrait, painted in Paris by J. Paul Brea around 1749. It was used in a number of publications on De La Salle. In the various countries where the brothers became established, the European lines of iconography were reproduced, and other new images were produced which responded to the need to integrate La Salian thinking to each local education situation. However, the important thing is that the image of De La Salle should be present in our hearts and not just before our eyes, and that it should be reflected in our actions.